Welcome, guys, to episode four. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and actually being a part of the community, man. Um, I appreciate all the support so far. Uh, thank you for joining, and um, welcome to Safe to Say. Yeah, so, uh, guys, this has been a very touchy, very, a very touchy su subject today, um, just because um, there's no right and wrong answer to this. I mean, obviously, there's a right answer, but there's uh, there's two parts to this story, um, if it makes sense. And today, we're going to talk about shooting in New York City and shooting in America in general, um, guns and um why is it such a problem? Why is it getting worse? Um, you would think that, honestly, over all the history that we have over the years and knowing about mass shootings and, and people dying within our neighborhoods and families that we would put down the guns, but it's uh, clearly the opposite. So I want to start off by saying, guys, please put down the guns. If you don't have a gun to protect your family and your household, then, I mean, then you don't need a gun for anything else, honestly. Uh, but you may you may think um, differently, and that is okay. But I'm here to kind of give you my insight on um, on the topic of guns in general, right? Um, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, bro. Um, we always knew that you know guns were always forbidden in New York City. We always knew that. But as you get older, you start to see certain people that have some little 22 or something like that. You know, he didn't bring it outside. Like, oh, why he got it? Or how he got it? And you kind of like, not build a fear, but overall, that is the goal. They want you to have fear for them. So, um, you either learn that you got to get one too, or uh, you just drift away from those particular people. Um, <laughs> like I said, this is a very, very touchy subject. Uh, I've had a, gun, a couple of gun incidents myself. Um, honestly, believe it or not, um, you know, right from when I became an adult, you know, honestly. So I turned 18. I was working in a store. I was working in a, in a smoothie spot, Jamba Juice. And um, you know how that is, man. You know, everybody thinks that uh, they're more powerful than the other person working and everybody gets paid the same rate. And um, little arguments start to happen. Um Long story short, I ended up uh, getting in an argument with a female about about her work ethic. Yeah, so um, actually, that was my second that was my second experience with a gun. But um, the first one, we're gonna get into the second one. But the first one was real simple, man. I was like ten years old. Uh, I went to DR with my dad and um, my family, and. Once we got off the plane, uh, he had a car waiting for him with his friends. And um, instantly he gave the guy a pound and, and the guy gave him his gun. Um, and that was the first time I actually saw a gun um, overall around me. Uh, fast forward to about a week later. Ironically, I'm laying in my bed and my younger brother uh, takes the unloaded gun, um, brings it to my room where I'm sleeping and kind of plays around and it's like boom, 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 you know, um, and clicks the gun, but thank God it was empty. <laughs> and, um, I got up and kind of slapped the gun and, and, uh, you know, like I said, I'm from Brooklyn or whatever. My, my brother and them, they were, you know, from Washington Heights, a little different. Um, but I already, you know, as, as the older kid, I was like, nah, you're bugging out. Um, so that was 10. And then you fast forward eight years later, luckily, you know, luckily I was able to last eight years without having any issues on particularly with guns right even now you know what i mean honestly we got to look at this as a blessing you know i'm 33 years old now um i'm living i'm healthy and never and you know never had a gun a gun situation so uh bless up for that but i know a lot of people are watching a lot of people out there have a different scenario and i understand i definitely do definitely do so we're gonna get into that right so first iteration dr Right now, second situation, I told you I was 18, Jamba Juice, um, I had an issue with some girl and we always got into this little issue every time we kind of worked together. So, 
uh, this one day, I don't know, I was, I was on some rah-rah, I guess. It's cool. I mean, like I said, you could talk about it now. And um, she was just like, yo, like, shut up. Like, you know what I mean? I don't care about my work ethic. I'll get my man on you. So I'm like, what? Like, I'm not scared of no fight. Call him. <laughs> like, I ain't scared of no fight, bro. We good. We could fight no matter what. So she walks to the back, you know, which was a manager's issue. The manager should have never let her get that phone call, but it is what it is. Um, she goes to the back and she comes back less than 30 seconds later and I'm like, oh yeah, he's coming. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So anyways, this is like 9 p.m. at night. About an hour passes and then all of a sudden, some guy comes in <laughs> into the building. So um, not holding anything or whatever, just coming to the building. So he pulls up and he's like, yo, you the one that got a problem with my girl? So I look at him like, I mean, apparently she got a problem with me. I don't care, da, da, da. like, you talk to me, any problems with her, you talk to me. I'm like, bro, I don't even know you. I'm like, whatever, man. So he's like, all right, bro, bro. I'm like, yo, bro, just wait for me outside, bro. It's all good, like. So I guess he realized that I wasn't getting, like, intimidated or scared. And so I backed out. He, he, didn't, he didn't shoot, but he backed out. So when he backed out, his shorty ran to him, pushed him out the door. There was clipped from there, the manager called the, the police or whatever, da, 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 da. Um, yeah, fast forward, they found them. I'm not sure what happened to them. I'm not sure what they did. Like, I don't know if they got caught. Did any time? No, do I care. But that was my second issue. Two situations I didn't need to get into, but again, that's life. So we're gonna talk about life, right? Um, where I stand, where I stand with guns. Um, I honestly feel like guns. Are, you have too much power in your hands. Where I am. Where I'm at with guns is, uh, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Um, I feel like there's too much power in one person's hands. You know, you can't, you can't make a life, a life changing decision with, uh, with a trigger. Um, and a lot of people do. And obviously this is happening every single day, including the police. The police cannot make this decision. Um, I'm, I'm all for the police having guns because at some point or another, you got to be able to, you know, back somebody down and be like, yo, calm down. Because if you don't, then somebody with a gun is going to be able to control you. But to the extent of how the police use them or pull them out on certain people who not understanding what that's doing. You know, like a lot of people say, it's my protection, it's my protection. Cops say that a lot. Yeah, you got to go home to your family, bro. But so do I. Like, you think I'm outside right now <laughs> and I'm in front of you because I'm trying to be in front of you? If I could be anywhere else in the world, you think I would be scamming? You think I would be robbing? You think I would be stealing? And obviously the answer is no. <laughs> so there is a reason, reasoning behind everything that people do. But when you bring that gun into play, you know, there's a saying out there, live by the gun, die by the gun. <laughs> Very powerful saying, all right? And what happens what you do with the gun, and what happens with the gun is that once you show somebody or let somebody know, hey, I got that thing, that's cool for now until that person becomes your enemy. Then, for whatever reason, your house is getting raided. <laughs> Funny shit, you know? Um, for whatever reason, all right, now people probably give you more respect. Um, showing you, you know, saying what's up to you a little bit more, you know what I mean? Head nodding or whatever. But what that does is that's putting a target on your back. Because every person that's looking at you is like, yo, he don't fight fear. So I already know how I got to handle him. <laughs> and it's bad because what happens is you, let's say you do got the gun. Let's say it's in the crib. It's only for that day that you might need it. But the other person in front of you, bro gonna have it already because they already know how you move so my recommendation honestly really honestly is, is to protect your home to protect your home you know so when it comes down to your private property to you know to even even your apartment you know nobody should be allowed to walk into your, to your door so when you're on the other side of your door 
and somebody's knocking or somebody's going crazy in the hallway or in front of you, you got to be able to say, hey, listen, I'm asking you to leave. If you're not going to leave, I'm calling the cops, bro, so they could actually leave. It may seem like a bitch move, but it's a, it's a safety thing right now. We're talking about safety. So you may have that thing, like I said, in the crib, but you may not have to use it. Now, suppose you're in the crib. 30 minutes done pass, 20 minutes done pass. You, you know somebody's outside wallet, right? And the cops don't show up. You got to call again. <laughs> Yo, I called y'all. You still wilding. Y'all waiting for something to happen. <laughs> I'm not calling no more. Like, this is my last time reaching out. And the cops should show up. But if they don't, you have right to peace within your home. So as long as your front door does not get open, does not, you know what I mean? Nothing happens to it. I mean, I can't even say not knocked on because... Technically, they can't knock on it, but it's like, if they knocking on it, it's to get you outside. That's a, that's a beat. You know what I mean? Don't let, never let somebody beat you. Um, You know, they're going to beat you to go outside for what? So you could get shot. That don't make no sense. Um, and what you do is you just wait. And if your door so happens to ever open or get broken into, then by all means, bro, let it go. Let it go. Do your thing. One time. Boom. Make sure you clear the room. If... <laughs> If that person just so happens to get hit by law, you're going to be good. There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to talk about. You know what I mean? Obviously, they intruded into your private space. You wasn't supposed to have this particular weapon, but you did. And you only used it to save your life. That That is the only one reason, guys. One reason. That's the only reason you need to have that. <laughs> You obviously, somebody's coming in. You don't know what's going on. You got a vulnerable state. You're in your drawers. Family's here. You can't, there's no, it's five guys outside, five girls, whatever, whatever the situation is. You don't know what it is. Those are the situations you're supposed to protect yourself from with that particular piece. But you walking around outside, robbing people, you know, you changing people's lives. I'm going outside and, you know, shooting at people or whatever, or just having it on you, and then somebody gets all rah rah. You know, everybody has the opportunity to talk. You know what I mean? So let people have their opinion. You know what I mean, words can, words was never really gonna hurt you, bro. <laughs> words is never gonna hurt you. I got thick skin, so honestly, when if somebody says something crazy to me, I'm just like, is that what you're thinking, bro? That's how you think about me? Like, I'm far from that. You know, that's kind of how I think. But I know a lot of other people like me because the problem with it. My words, I know how to get on the people's skin, really. And it's not intentional. It's just that some of the words I use may seem like I don't even care. And everybody wants to be cared about. That's pretty much what it comes down to. So, right? Um, now, back, back to what I was saying before about, you know, my first time. You know, with my gun scenarios, right? So those happen, that happened, whatever. And then what happens is you get older and the places that you are, the, the, the people that you're with, change that energy. So as I've gotten older, I, I've removed myself from the neighborhood, particularly from Monday to Friday to Saturday, you know? So what happens is I'm not even, I'm not even aware of what's going on within my neighborhood because I'm outside of the neighborhood living a different type of life. So you end up forgetting how dangerous the neighborhood actually is. You know, um, you know, me walking in to, to NYCHA now seems very much more dangerous than it did a year ago um, from personal experience, you know, from just looking around. Everybody, like I told you, everybody is kind of here just like or like like leeching, like looking or lurking, like looking for that next the next victim, but they're not telling you that. That's how it feels. So in every project's kinda every night you complex that you go to, it kinda feels like a like I said, a cringy feeling. More or less, um more or less 
the rock bottom, you know, unfortunately. So, boom, going into that, right? That's kind of my personal experience on guns. Um, I've shot a couple of guns in the gun range. Not very fun. It's not my cup of tea, guys. Not my cup of tea. Um, but uh, again, that was just my opinion on what I feel like, you know, guns should be used for or where they should be held out and things like that. Um, again, we all know that, you know, having a gun is obviously illegal and you have to understand that too, that bringing that, that thing to a fight changes up the scenario crazy. So no matter, like, they gotta always think too, I was telling somebody the other day, I'm like, every day you go outside and you got your shit, you have, have a potential of going away for a long time. Let's take this being your last day on the streets. And if you had to have that peace on you continuously is because you're doing something wrong in life. There's no way somebody should be constantly looking for you unless you did something wrong to them. But again, no judgment because we all have done our dirt. We've all have things that we regret. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's just, that's just my opinion on it. Um, and then going into like, you know, the black community, particularly, um, a lot of killings, a lot of killings happen due to gun violence. Um, you know, it's crazy. You know what I mean? Even, you know, so much as recent as, as, uh, as takeoff, right. Which is a rapper and, and he couldn't keep himself out of the streets enough not to, not to avoid that, uh, that, uh, end story, that destiny. You know what I mean? Unfortunately. Um, and he wasn't even the prime, the, uh, the main target. So, you know, it just shows you. Um, and it happens a lot. Oh, man, going back into like, let's say even going to the subway shooter, you know, not subway shooter, but the, the dude that came on, was on the A train and, um, I guess he had, he got on a nose train or whatever. He had an argument or whatever with a Spanish guy or something like that. Um, the guy, that guy had the gun. He brought the gun on the train. He, now we can't say he initiated the argument, but he had an argument and then he brought out the gun after he got stabbed. You know, no pun intended, because I already knew that obviously you know, he was mad about that. I knew I would have too. But looking at his size, like he would, it didn't matter if he got stabbed or not, he would have still been able to take the guy. He pulled out the gun and ended up changing his whole fate. Um, he added fuel to the fire. He changed up the scenario. Um, he changed up his destiny just by bringing out that piece. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, you know, then going into even like the Diddy allegations of, you know, Diddy likes the, likes the guns and he's a little gun boy type thing, right? How he had J-Lo bringing the gun into the club and stuff like that. That sounds crazy, you know, but I understand because a person with that much money, a person with that much to lose, it's easy for them to say hey listen I'll take the risk or I'll let somebody else take the risk and I'll bail them out because of technicalities and that, again that's protection but when you actually use it uh, it's, it's no longer protection it's, it's um, you the aggressor um, it literally should be life or death and unfortunately in, um, in this world or even in the United States itself there's a lot of laws that contradict itself because you tell me that I only could use a reasonable force. So you're telling me I can't use a gun unless somebody else has a gun. But in reality, if they use the gun first, I might not even get a chance to use my gun. And if I use my gun first, I have to go and explain why I didn't let them use their gun first. Uh, it sounds it sounds dumb. It's dumb, as hell, dumb as hell. But nonetheless, that's what we live in. So, yeah, you know, we just uh, we just got to get into that, you know, like that. All right. All right, and then um, you know, there's a guy I recently started following, Gotham City God. You know, shout out to you, bro, because you know you, you creating content, which is official, and um, you know, I'm 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 there, I'm following it. So he posted. I don't even know where he got these stats from exactly, but it is what it is. Um, in 2023, 
1,163 people were unalived by police in America. 500 of them are black or were black. There were 1,000 murders just between New York City and Chicago alone. But we also loud about what other people is doing to us. But always skip over what we doing to ourselves. It's worse than what an enemy is doing to us. Just check the numbers. So, <laughs> um, it's black on black crime. And again, I know people say that that's honestly not true. And that there's no such thing as black on black crime, but it is. When I say black on black crime, I'm talking about somebody that grew up black, skin color is black, you know, their um, their culture is black, even the hip-hop community, you know what I mean? Like, even if you're a white boy in the hip-hop community and and um, you shoot another black guy, like, like you heard what I said, another black guy, you know? You know, hence that, that you was you was a part of that, that, that crew of black people. Once you do that shooting, statistically, they're gonna say white man shot a black guy, but if you were the aggressor or you brought that problem or you brought that gun or you actually did that killing at that event, you were part of that group. So, um, it's unfortunate, you know? And um, we're going to end off with cause I, what I really wanted to do. Originally, this podcast was supposed to be about the police. And I'll get into that next week, you know? We'll do week number five for five zero. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, my goal was to talk about what he said also about how we had 500 people that were unalived so by the police. And the way I see that is kind of like, I know the police don't want to help, especially in New York City. After George Floyd happened and the whole uh, protest, they, they gave up. They said... They said, let the city kill them, kill themselves. Um, when they need us, they'll call us and we'll respond. But other than that, let them kill, each, kill, the, kill themselves. Sorry. So, um, when, when I hear that, it's kind of disappointing. Because we pay the police. You know, my, my money, the little money that I do make, <laughs> pays the police. Um, the money that you make pays the police. All of our money combined. Even if it's a dollar each, pays these 44,000 cops in our city. Um, and even if they don't believe it or not, you know, um, the, where's the money coming from? The money's coming from the taxpayers, and we are all the taxpayers, believe it or not. At some point of another, you're paying tax on uh, your food, you know, or, you know, your food, your items, your clothes, things like that. I mean, obviously, stuff is tax exempt, but you get the point. You're paying tax and it's going to our government agencies. They all get a budget. They get split up amongst that budget. Whatever, obviously, we don't collect. I'm pretty sure the government covers. Um, and it's all just the logistics. But, and it's all obviously inflated. You know what I mean? So who knows what the actual numbers are. But, again, you do get paid by the people. So just cut it out, you know, and work for the people. So it's disappointing because um, I always said, you know, if I, if I wanted to be a cop, I would... I would own that job with the utmost respect. I would, would have, um, it, it would be an honor, you know, it would be an honor because what you're doing is you are now voted in to serve and protect the people when their life, it, it might be coming to end. You have the opportunity to extend that. And what the, what the city has done, New York City particularly has done has did the opposite, has told our people and took away so many programs. Like, remember they said that they was allocating money um, from the Black Lives Matter protests to NYCHA and, and black communities and that. That was a lie, right? They never did it. Um, and even if they did do something, some sort of something like that, um, it wasn't to benefit the kids. It was just to make them look good. So... That's my issue with the police. Like, what the police don't understand is obviously everybody's going to have an opinion. Hence what we're doing right now. Um, but it's not about the opinion, man. It's about the, the numbers. It's about the growing numbers of people surviving, living in the neighborhood, being able to... The growing number of jobs in the neighborhood, the growing number of taxpaying citizens, the growing number of voters. When you see those numbers grow within a community, you know that 
the police and the and the councilwoman and the councilmen or the you know um, all those people are obviously doing their job correct. But when you see the neighborhood in shambles, you see when the stores are not being rented out, there's nothing to buy and everything is expensive and there's no programs for the kids and we can go on and on. You know who is involved. Um, and um, believe it or not, your police are one of the main reasons why we have violence. Um, they're not out there trying to combat the guns. They're trying to scare the gun, the guys with the guns away. But in reality, that's not going to work. <laughs> I mean, that hasn't worked yet. Um, it's tough. It's tough to get somebody, especially from the neighborhood, even like myself, to like, because I had a couple of runs where I was in the, uh, the precinct and uh, I felt like these guys were cool. You know, but the thing is, their job is to be actors. So they were acting, and eventually, until I found out that they were acting, and then um, the tables turned, and I'm no longer, you know, no longer uh, around that scene. And I actually gave up everything I was doing in the community because of it, because um, this is exactly what they wanted. But it's cool because I, now that I allowed them to do it, the community allowed them to do it so the community loses so that was the overall goal but back into the whole start of it was pretty much the guns again this is the the police are not gonna they're not trying to actually find the guns they want these killings to actually happen um they want you to be able to say hey we need more cops you heard that before and then um obviously they're gonna hire more cops and they're all gonna have to do less work um, that's overall the goal. So again, guys, we're killing ourselves. We're doing this to ourselves. We're giving them exactly what they want. Um, anybody that's watching, um, put the guns down. You know, again, protect your family, keep it in the crib. But, but, uh, but that's it. You know. Um, other than that, enjoy life. You know, life is so precious. You know, so precious for you to be able to take away somebody else's kid. Um, if you created a kid, you understand that blessing. So, you know, again, this, this podcast is not, it's life advice is my advice. It's how I feel. And it's the information that I want to give. Um, I feel like it's important. Hopefully you guys understand. Yeah. So, uh, video cut it, cut out for some reason. I'm not sure, but it's cool. I was at the end of it anyways. Um, Again, I, like I said, um, it's my advice, and um, I would, I'm just trying to give you my best advice and something that I would do. Um, you know, hopefully you guys choose the right, the the, the right decision, the right path to make sure that you're here tomorrow for, you know, your kids and things like that. So, um, moving forward, you know, again, thank you guys for watching. Again, episode four, safe to say, you know. Uh, we want to move forward and um, we want to get better as, as people. So uh, hopefully you guys take it my consideration. Um, thanks for watching again. Take care.